All right, class, today we're going to do some combinations. Um, we talked about permutations before, um, and we're going to look at combinations here briefly. Okay, here's a basic difference from your book on what a combination is. A combination is similar to a permutation in that we're selecting a certain amount of things out of a larger group. So maybe I've got 28 actors and five of them are going to perform tonight. Um, and I need to f figure out how many different ways could I get five performers out of whatever I said, 28 people. Um, the difference between a combination and permutation is that in a permutation, um, down here, I'm going to highlight a little or underline a little bit. Okay, a permutation problems involve situation which order matters. So in the situation I just gave, we're not only concerned with a permutation about choosing five people to perform out of 28, we're actually trying to find all the different ways that we could order them from first performer to second to third to fourth to fifth. In a combination, we don't care about order. So in a permutation, um, like as an example, if I have the letters A, B, and C, and I'm trying to figure out all the different ways that I can order those. Obviously, I have A, B, C, C, B, A, B, A, C, and I could go on and on and on. Well, in a combination, all of these are the same thing because they all have an A, B, and a C in them because we don't care about the order. So if I'm trying to find all the ways to pick three letters from this, there's only one way to pick three letters from A, B, and C because there's only three letters there and that would be a combination. So how many combinations of A, B, and C are there if I'm picking three letters out of there? Well, that'd be, um, that'd be one. But there's a lot of different permutations of that because I can do A, B, C. I can, you know, if this were performers, I can do A first, then B, then C. I can do C first, then B, then A. I can do B first, then A, then C. So places where permutations tend to come into play is, is um, let's look at another example here, see if we can make this a little clearer. If I have the numbers one, two, three, and I'm gonna pick two out of, I'm gonna have two performers, performer one, two, and three, three performers rather, one, two, and three, and two of them are gonna perform tonight. What are all the possible orders of the performance? Well, for permutations, I'll put a P above this, I got one could go first, then two. I've got two could go first, then one. I've got one could go first, then three. Three to go first, then one. Then I could go two, and then three. Then I could go three could go first, then two. Okay? So if you look at that, I have hit all the different possible orders. One, then two, two, then one, one, then three, three, then one, two, then three, three, then two. We've done every combination. Um, as far as combinations, well, if you take a look, because order doesn't matter with the combination, these two are the exact same because they both have a two and a one. These two are exact same because they both have a three and a one, and these two are the exact same because they both have a two and a three. So there's actually only three combinations, but six permutations. Because when order matters, we get more examples. So that's a basic difference between or combinations and permutations. So if you take a look here, in a combination, I want you to note that no item is used more than once, and the order of the items makes no difference. Those are the two big things we just talked about. Okay, let's do a couple examples to kind of illustrate how you tell the difference between these in an actual problem. Okay, um, let's take a look at this one. For each of the following problems, determine whether the problem is one involving permutations or combinations. It's not necessary to solve the problem. So just look at the two here. How many ways can you select six DVDs from a list of 200 DVDs? Okay, so here we're just arbitrarily picking six DVDs out of a list of 200. We don't care about order. There's no first, second, or third place. There's no, we're going to line them up on a stage. There's anything like this. So for A, that's going to be a combination. 
In a race in which there are 50 runners and no ties, in how many ways can the first three finishers come in? So for this one, um, there's a first, second, and third. First three finishers. So in a race, generally, there's a first, second, and a third. So order does matter. So what are all the different ways out of 50 runners? I could have a first, second, and third. Now order matters. So we've not only got that we're choosing three out of 50, but we're choosing a particular order for second and third. So that is a permutation. So things where order matters, guys, is in things. Um, so per, per, some things were, and this is not an exhaustive list, but it's at least a beginning list. Oh, I spelled that wrong, dang it. Okay. So we're, things where order matters would be things like... Um, you know, line up on a stage, places like in a race or in a poker tournament or something like that. Uh, a combination for a lock, a lock combo. Because if you in a lock combo, it's important that the letters or the words or whatever you're using are in letters or the numbers are in order. Otherwise, the combo doesn't open right. The lock does not open rather. So those are some examples of where permutations come into play. Um, or if you have another one would be like you have um, certain positions to be filled. So like you've got 40 people um, and you're going to have a president, vice president, and secretary. And you've got to find out all the different ways that people can be populated into those roles. And I could go on and on and on. Those are all things where order matters, where people are being placed in a particular role or a particular ranking or something like that. Um, otherwise, if we're just choosing three random things from a larger group, it's a combination. Okay, here's uh, the formula for combinations, which is different than permutations, and we use the, the notation NCR. And with this NCR, this N is the total number. And the R is the number chosen, the number we're picking from, okay? And this is all factorials and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so let's do an example here. How many different four-card hands can be dealt from a deck that has 16 different cards? Okay, so that would be, the order doesn't matter here. They don't, they don't give us any ranking or order. <clears throat> like they don't ask... Uh, how many different ways could we, how many different poker hands, four card poker hands would there be, that would be particular. They didn't ask anything weird like that. What they did do is ask how many four card hands in general. So this is just 16 C4, which by the way, we can put into our calculator and it's under that same menu in the last class. It's under the, the math menu, so hit math so to do this, we can hit the math button on our calculator, and then we can scroll over to probability, PRB. It's one of the tabs across the top. And it's number three, NCR, okay? So what you wanna do first is you wanna put in your number first, 16. So 16, then hit math, Scroll over to probability, down to NCR, number three. And then, so you're gonna put in 16, then in your calculator you're gonna select the NCR function the way we just said, and then you'll put in the four. And I get 1,820 different comp, four card hands. Um, again, where order does not matter in this one. Okay, 50 people purchase raffle tickets. Three winning tickets are selected at random. If each prize is $500, in how many different ways can the prizes be awarded? 50 people purchase raffle tickets. Three winning tickets are selected at random. How many different ways, if each prize is $500, how many different ways can the prize be awarded? So what's key about this is, is that order does not matter. Here's why. They're, they're picking three out of 50 and everybody gets the same amount of prize. There's not a first, second, and third, there's not a $500 prize, a $250 prize, and a $100 prize, which would mean that there's different ways you can put people into those different positions. 
um, there's just everybody gets an equal prize and there's you're choosing three out of 50. So this is a combination. Um, order doesn't matter in this one. So this would literally just be 50 C three. Okay, which on my calculator, getting that out. Again, we hit the math button. Or wait, do we refer to 50, 50 first? So we, on the calculator, we do 50, and then we click the NCR button, um, which is under math, probability three, and then we hit three. And it looks like there's 19,600 different ways the prize can be awarded to this group of 50 people. Okay, let's try this group of two. Nine comedy acts will perform over two evenings. Five of the acts will perform on the first evening. How many ways can the schedule for the first evening be made? Okay, the reason I'm going to do this one, we'll do these in tandem. Uh, using 15 flavors of ice cream, how many cones with three different flavors can you create? If it's important to you, which flavor goes on top, middle, and bottom? Okay. The reason I'm doing these two together is that this one's a permutation. Why? The reason it's a permutation is because the order, top, middle, bottom, which I lay those things down. So permutation, I was looking for order language, like rankings, positions people are being placed in, different levels of prize money, um, orders in a lineup for a, a performance, things like that. You're always looking for some kind of hint that they're, you're, the order that we lay things down matters. This one, there's no order mattering. We're just picking um, nine comedy acts. We're picking uh, five comedy acts for the first evening, and we don't say that, you know, how many different ways are there to order the five people, like who goes first and second, which is we're just picking five. So how many different ways could we pick five for the first night? That's it. So this is a combination. So 48 would be 9C2, okay? And that comes out to nine, math, probability, three, two. It's 36, 36 ways for that one. And for 49, this would be um, 15, how many cones of three different flavors? P3. So I put the 15 in my calculator, hit the math button, go to probability, do the NPR. And that'd be three, and that's 2730. Okay, one more in this section. Okay, this one this one uh, it, uh, uses two different principles we've looked at. Let's read it. A zoo has six male bears and seven female bears. Two male, be two male bears and three female bears will be selected for an animal exchange program with another zoo. How many five bear collections are possible? So here's the idea. We're going to pick three female bears bears okay and we're gonna pick two male bears so we have two categories we're picking from right there right three females and two males so we're gonna use so we're first gonna figure out how many ways are there to pick two male bears out of six male bears and order doesn't matter in this one, guys, because we're just picking any two out of the six. So that would be, this is six combination two. Oh, wait, I had to put that in the wrong one. That should be in the male bears, my bad. Uh, I put it, put it in the wrong one. So this should be six combination two for the number of how, all the different ways to pick two male bears. Now in red, we're going to pick three female bears out of seven female bears. So that would be six combination three. Okay. And what those equal, let's do those. If we do six math, I'm just doing this so you can kind of do it as well. Um, six math. Three is 20. So that's the first spot. And then we have another category that we're picking from. And that would be six math. Two. That'd be 15. 
And because there's two categories and I have 20 possibilities in this one, and I have 15 possibilities in this one, I'm going to use in this to get the, the total amount of combinations for the whole system, I'm going to use the fundamental counting principle. which means I multiply those two things because I have two categories I'm choosing. If remember, go back to the fundamental counting principle. When I have multiple categories, I find out how many choices are in each category, and then I just multiply those choices to get the total number of possibilities. So this would be 20 times 15, and that's 300. So there's 300 total possible combinations, but it's a key in this word problem to recognize there's two categories. I'm choosing a certain amount of females out of the total, certain amount of males out of the total. Once I get the number of possibilities for each of those, I have to multiply those two possibilities of those two categories to get the total number of possibilities for the whole system. Okay, that's it for 11.3. We're going to go on to 11.4 next.